Hey, 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 welcome to the Travis Hill podcast. It's aptly named after its host, me, Travis Hill. In us in the discussion today, we have Alex Forsyth. Welcome. That's me. That Hi, is you. Thank Hello. you. Hello. Thank I'm you glad for coming. To be here. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, we're going to go over some stuff that's itching my brain and, you know, kind of, if not uh, current events, you know, just stuff that, you know, Allow me to we scratch your about. brain. Yeah, yeah. No, no, please scratch. Here. I'll, let me <laughs> let me get in there. Get in there. So, um, I think what really uh, brings us together, especially, mm. is uh, movies. Yes. TV shows. Yes, I'd say comedy so. Comedy in general, of course. But um, but let's focus on one of those. Let's focus on movies for now. Right. Um, I think I think it's been such an interesting year for movies. I mean, obviously. You know everything coming out, but with the with the pandemic pushing everything. Well, yeah, it's been an interesting couple of years now, yeah. almost. Oh yeah, because, basically. Like, last year too is there was there was a um. I mean, one of the big things that I can just think of off the top of my head is going to cinemas way less. Yeah, like in terms of movies, one of the things I, I uh, is that I just have seen less movies. Yeah, it's true. I think much like most people, I. Um, as you know, I work at a theater, right? And I was serving these people. It's a VIP theater, so I'm a server for them. Fancy. Um, just a little background on well, uh, But um, yeah. So I I went up uh, to this couple, and they're like, "Hey, this is our first time out since COVID started." And you know, it's November right now. It's November third, twenty twenty one. Yes. So this thing's been going on for at least a year and a half. Um, it's very understandable that people are just starting to get out there again. But I was like, oh, wow. And, and they were seeing uh, Dune, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, and I, I recently saw Dune. You saw Dune. And it was uh, also one of my, I think, probably my second time back in theaters since everything started. Which oh. first being? Third. First, no, it's two. I've seen two other movies before that, and I, I'd seen The Suicide Squad. Oh, yes. And Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi, yes. Yes, um, I, I also saw Shang-Chi in theaters. I saw Dune. And I saw Black Widow when it first came out. Ah, uh, yes. I like, yeah, I mean, yes, I uh, still need to watch that on Disney Plus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because this is not gonna go to the theaters. But that was that was just just before I was comfortable heading out to to the theaters again. There was a point in time when I was worried I would never go back to the theaters. I'm like, oh my They're goodness, gonna close. They're gonna close. They're gonna open again. The last movie I ever saw in theaters was Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh no. Oh God. <laughs> what a memory to leave that off on. <laughs> I, I don't know if there could be a worse movie. There's definitely worse movies. But, yeah, oh, for sure. Um, but yeah, like just that like couple come in being like, this is our first time. I was like, damn. Um, but like with everything being pushed back, pushed back, I remember James Bond, like theaters reopened and Tenant came out. Like for that right. very small like month. Yes. Where like, hey, uh, numbers are down, so I guess we'll open up theaters again. And, you know, Tenant was out. And... Um, the SpongeBob movie, I remember that. I still haven't seen that, but that was that, out as well. That went to theaters. Yeah, yeah, went to theaters when Tenet came out. So like nobody saw that because <laughs> everyone yeah, seen Tenet. Yeah, I guess not. And um, and James Bond was supposed to come out then, but it got pushed. No back. Time to Die that yes. just came out. Yes. Oh wow, I didn't realize it had been so delayed. It's been so long. Like it was supposed to be. Um, I mean, probably coming out like April of 2020, and then it was like wow. August of 2020, and then it was. It just came out in October and 2021. And like that was, I mean, that's Daniel Craig's last yes. outing as, as Bond. Yes. For it to be delayed that much. I mean, there must already be, pain. there must already be work on the next Bond. How much planning Jeez, is there done? What? That's a good question. I think for the most part, they probably focus on not only the, the production right. of the current film, but like also the promotion of the current film. That makes sense. And then I'm sure they move on to the, like the... But that's true. They had a lot of time yeah. to focus on that. They probably already have a, a couple scripts going. Yeah, and a couple actors in mind. I, I know yeah. there's been a lot of, uh, I don't know any of the names that have been tossed around, but a lot of speculation, like a female Bond okay. coming into play. Yeah. You know you know what's funny? I remember uh, I was serving somebody in James Bond, and this guy was like, ugh, a female Bond. <laughs> It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. What? What? Oh, what next? You know, it's just like starts <laughs> well, going off. You know, it's like <laughs> I'm sorry. I just work here, man. <laughs> yeah, and you're just like, yeah, man. Um, 
I guess so. And they're just like, oh, sure. like, <laughs> you know, like Jan- Jennifer Bond and shit. But, I, get, um, I, I, I went, I went to the dentist of all places and it was, um, my family dentist. So she knows me from when I was very, very young mm-hmm. and, uh, she loves to talk, started talking to me about James Bond. Um, and she was like, uh, and I mentioned the, the concept of a female Bond may, maybe coming up after Daniel Craig. And she went, I get it. And I think that would be very cool, but I go to James Bond for my eye candy. So <laughs> you, you, we got to feed the ladies. I, she was like, "I want someone like Henry Cavill," and I'm like, <laughs> "Ooh, you know what? Superman, James mm-hmm. Bond. He played a man from Uncle. He was in that. Yes, he's almost I, a little bit of a James Bond, which type uh, kind of uh, almost or even a parody Impossible. of." But I no, I like I really like Man from Uncle. Oh yeah, true. That was that yeah, that was pretty good. Oh, could you imagine like a a James Bond movie starring Henry Henry Cavill, directed by Guy Ritchie? Ooh, that would be that would be exciting. very good. You know what? That's actually almost every Guy Ritchie movie though. You know right. he's already going on that spy espionage, crime stuff. But it's if true. it was just polished and had that, I, I was thinking, figure. oh, they're gonna they're gonna have to make Henry Cavill do. A British accent? No, they won't. <laughs> what? He's just British. He's British. Okay, yeah, yeah, no. But I've seen him in so much. But Man American from stuff. Uncle, he does an American accent. Superman, it's an American accent. He's always doing I think Mission Impossible. Yeah. So too. he's. My brain went to. Oh no, he's gonna need. No. Yeah, no. Never mind. Yeah. It's fine. It works much there, better than I thought. There's some actors that genuinely do an American accent all the time. All the that time. That you just don't. You're like, oh yeah, that person's. British, I guess. I mean, well, like... the one that blew me away the most was always uh, Andrew Lincoln from Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, no, he's really... Coral! <laughs> Wait, I mean, yeah, it's like such a voice. Yeah, can you, imagine, can you imagine he breaks it like one time in the show? He's like, Coral! We gotta hop over the gate! <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah, they just let it slide. Yeah, they're like, like man, Whoa. it's Andrew Lincoln. Are we, are we really, really gonna correct him? What or? are we gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> but um, to, I guess to kind of rope it back like yeah. uh, to movies coming out and like i i don't know because i think i think the way uh streaming services have, have been brought into the environment of movies obviously netflix has been a thing for a long time yes um especially in the streaming aspect of it it was only during the pandemic where we couldn't go to theaters and we were stuck at home the whole time that it really thrived and streaming services became all over the place. It was yeah. HBO had one, Netflix has one, Disney has one, uh, Prime has one. Um, Apple Prime has Harry one. Has. It's yeah, I, Apple too. Um, and it's great. We're getting great content, and we're seeing more content than ever. And you know, a lot of it is award worthy. Oh, for sure. But, but is it phasing out the theater experience and and stuff that would be blowing up at the I, box office? Yeah, it used to be whenever there was a new movie coming out, it would be like I'm going to the theater to see. This new movie. It was an event. It was an event. Now, it's like, oh, it's not going to be out on streaming for a while. Okay, I'll go to the theater. And And there's some movies releasing, like, in in conjunction with each other of in theater and streaming services. Like, a lot of movies. Black Widow was a big one. And then there was a... Dune. Yeah. Dune came out. Halloween Kills. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And I think even Suicide Squad as well. Yeah, Both and in HBO Max. And uh, I mean, with, with Black Widow, <laughs> unless, <laughs> uh, but with, like with Black Widow, there was also the huge like, it's not nailed down yet because they they didn't have, like the big lawsuit with Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, that was a bit confusing. Yeah, um, if she in her contract said, "Hey, listen, like if you're gonna release this movie, only do it in theaters." Right. And and then like from what I heard about it and it, it did kind of fizzle out like this yeah. is what what currently I know about it. And it was a while ago. It was a couple yeah, months yeah. ago, three months ago, um, was that she's like, I'm suing Disney and Marvel because you release this movie without my cons- or like not only my against my contract's Contract. wishes. And then Disney was like, yeah, th- there's nothing to that. Like, th- that's bullshit. And then it ended. And I was like, what? Well, to be fair, it sounds very it's- much so like Disney settled. Yeah, probably. So probably they're like fucking. Hey. It, it, like they're just like, okay, fine. Here's fifty million dollars yeah. or some shit, and they're but like, just shut up. If like, uh, if a, if an actor's contract it specifically refers to theater releases and mm-hmm. then getting uh, paid based off like box office, yeah. Um, and then you also release it on streaming service, and you don't clear that with them, like that. That's taking away from their yeah paycheck, and so it's like I. 
it's becoming so much more common to release it on streaming and in theater simultaneously. But I'm also like, do they have it nailed down yet? Yeah. How to make sure it doesn't take away from any aspect of the uh, production. And also from box office. Because you know what? We used to say Jaws. Jaws made, you know, 600 million, whatever it was, in the box office. Right. Because that's how much the movie made. Well, yeah. And then it goes on to sell... DVD, VHS, merchandise, Blu-ray, quality, whatever. Ver- merchandise, exactly, posters even, you know, yeah. like little things. And then with the streaming service, it's like Suicide Squad kind of flopped a little bit in theaters. Like, it didn't if you, flop wholeheartedly, yeah. right. but it didn't make as much as people thought it would. But at the same time, they probably got a giant chunk of money for releasing on HBO Max. For sure. Which is a very interesting, like, little little topic of, like, how they split that up. Like, I wonder how much they, the company, the filmmakers, get from HBO Max releasing right. on there. Right. The other thing that I've, I've noticed is that I think, I think people are more willing to spend money on a movie immediately. Mm. Like, there have been a few instances. Well, it's convenient with streaming. Um, but I know some of the straight-to-streaming straight releases mm-hmm. were released for free. And so, yeah, for the most part. I mean, if you have that, if you have yeah. the streaming service, so besides you're, Disney, besides, premier access, exactly. Bullshit. Well, this is the thing, right? If you're gonna release it on a streaming service and then charge for it extra on the streaming service, it's uh, it's no it's no more than you would pay were you to go to the theater. But the theater yeah. is an experience. It's an experience, right? And that's what you're paying for is to yeah. be in the seats with your popcorn and your drink, and you're not gonna get that sitting in your living room. And so people are it's way true. less willing. So I feel like I think some people prefer it, you know, because well, like, true. I mean, fucking theater. We, we all know crying baby, people texting, yeah. ring, 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 that's people true. talking so loud. You know what I mean? And just some noxious people in the theaters. You know, if you kind of just watched it at home, there's a bit less of that. You know, you get to snuggle up, you get to pause it whenever you want. You can go to the washroom. That's true. That's another thing. <laughs> but at benefit. the same time, hey, I'm 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 a huge fan of the theater experience. Right. Personally, I, I get all that. I'll, I get all that stuff ready. You know what I mean? I'm like I'm gonna go to the washroom two and a half minutes before the film starts. I'm gonna have my popcorn. I'm gonna sneak in chocolate almonds because that's my favorite <laughs> candy. You know. Um, but yeah, so like it is, it is almost a religious thing. Like yes. For some people, uh, is just going to the theater and not having that for a year and a half was really impactful to to a lot of people. I remember um, Mulan. Yeah. That was gonna come out like right before COVID started. Mulan was gonna come out, oh. and I remember that very well because uh, business was slowing down a bit, and right. um, and then everyone was like, no. But wait for Mulan, because when Mulan comes, we're gonna have business again. I don't know. I don't know if it was like maybe the rumblings of COVID were getting to people, and we were like right. having a little bit bez- less business. I think it was that we didn't really have a a big movie out, so we're like, when Mulan hits, and then okay, we're like everyone stay home, and you know we got to close up shop for like a, two weeks, mm-hmm. two months, yeah, half a, a few year, more months. Uh, yeah, uh, half a year, right, right, right. Oh, hey, you want to watch Tenant? You can watch Tenant. Uh, and close for get a year. back inside for a year. Ah, <sighs> but um, but yeah, it's it's changed the landscape of it everything we know. Really has like the not just the theaters themselves, but the whole film industry is being completely rewritten. Yeah. Every day now, like what is required to be on film, um, my agency. Yeah, um, I'm an actor. Uh, <laughs> uh, my agency reached out to me recently, and up until now, uh, I, I I hadn't spoken to them much because for a while, for a good while there, there were not a lot of roles. Mm. Um, but now they just sent out an email to the whole agency that basically said. Official got gu- new official guidelines. Before it was only recommended. Now official, most union a- or sorry, all union and most non-union sets, unless you can provide uh, that you've been double vaccinated um, and you'll be wearing masks on set and all that, uh, unless you can confirm and show your receipts, you will not be hired for this role. Yeah, there's no you're not even in consideration. Yeah, the, it's it's completely different. I remember I, I saw Ice Cube turned down to roll and i think if i'm not mistaken it was something like a six million dollar roll i got to double check actually but ice cube it was can turn down six million dollars pretty subs- wow that was so weird this is like my second phone yeah and 
my most recent this is crazy my Thanks. most recent searched google uh thing on this on this phone is ice cube death certificate so like i was i mean that's an album but like that's so weird like fucking what well, a weird coincidence on the subject of ice cube hey i'm gonna search up ice cube oh I just searched up Ice Cube. <laughs> this is actually your own. The, you only use this phone to look up Ice Cube. It's true. This is my <laughs> Ice Cube phone. So, uh, nine million dollar oh. paycheck. I guess plus royalties and stuff. He turned it down because he wasn't vaccinated. I see, and didn't want to get vaccinated. Didn't want to get vaccinated. Okay. Well, freedom of speech, I guess. But damn, that's a lot of money. But yeah, I mean, <sighs> they're like they're like Ice Cube bull. We'll wait for you to get vaccinated. It's fine. Like, we can just, wait. We can wait a month or a month and a half or whatever. And he's like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> this is like shit. But damn, dude, like, that's pretty substantial. But yeah. that is the landscape now. That is what? What, how we're living in. Restaurants are like that, uh, at least in Canada, where we live, Ontario. Yep. Um, literally, you can't dine in in a restaurant or a mall mm. unless you're double vaccinated. You're fully vaccinated. Yeah. Got to show your receipts now, whatever, wherever you go. Like, yeah. oh, yep, there it is. QR code, I guess they're coming out with that. Yes, I have my QR code. You do? You have I your do. own QR code? You I own have my own QR code. code. You have your own QR code to say that you're fucking double back. I'm special. You're special. I got just my receipt, my fucking second dose receipt. Mm -hmm. and, oh, you know, actually, I'm going to fucking, on my Ice Cube phone, <laughs> download my QR code. Can't do anything else on that phone. Yeah. Um. But, okay, yeah, let, let's talk about, okay, so. There, there have been movies coming out. They, yes. They, um, t for the most part, most of the movies of, in 2021 have come out online. Yep. Through streaming services. But in the last couple months, last two, three months, we've gotten some movies in theaters. Yes. Now tell me, which ones have you seen? Which ones stick out to you? So um, I've seen three. <laughs> and <laughs> The three you mentioned previously? The, that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, and there were, I've seen three that came out, uh, oh, and I don't remember when that came out. And then I've seen two that were released in the, no, that one wasn't released in theaters. I'm just rambling. Um, but Dune, yeah. Suicide Squad, yeah. and, um, Shang-Chi. Mm. Uh, and then I saw, um, Free Guy. Yeah. Uh, I on streaming. That one I waited until okay. it came out on streaming yeah, and then I, I watched the, it. I, me too, me too. Um, but it was one that I was I was almost considering maybe I'll go to the theaters for that, but I didn't mm, end yeah. up going. It's it, that was a movie I walked into when mm -hmm. I was serving people. I was like, oh, that looks like a pretty good movie. Yeah. It's gotten really mixed reviews from from pe people in my friend group. Like overall, it's had like pretty uh, generally positive reviews. That's what I thought. Yeah, but um, personally. In my friend group, people right. were like, ah, I don't really like that movie. I don't really like that movie. And I, I was like, ah, I like the movie. Right I, it was, listen, it's not Citizen Do you want to go into Kane. side ramble just a little bit for Free Guy? Just, just, just for real a sec. Quick, for, real quick. It's not going to redefine cinema. No, not at all. But it was a good time. I, I, I had a good time. I, I, I don't, I think actually yeah. my least favorite aspect of that movie was the direction. I think it wasn't inter I, I don't think it was bold enough in how it was filmed and how it was paced. Right. Uh, to be honest, like it was very just run of the mill in that sense. Yeah. Very 90s rom com. But the ideas there, like Ryan Reynolds' performance and jokes, yes. really like were just delightful to see. Absolutely. And, uh, the, the ideas toward the end of the film, like, you're I was like, like oh, okay. There's some, there's some nice stuff there. Yeah. And yeah. also, I think I like, as okay. a. As a avid uh gamer yeah there are uh, uh, there are things there that i can appreciate that uh, yeah. uh there's uh that potentially general viewing public might not yeah little easter eggs you know and th those small things are just kind of like oh that's nice that's yeah. that's clever because you know what you know what's funny is one of the biggest criticisms i heard from other people was like you know what like video games don't work like that they're like it's just annoying because, like, what, what you know, Wait, yeah. like, blah, 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 they don't look like that, they don't work like that. But I'm just like, you know what, like, whatever, you know? Right? Like, it's just, I mean, it really is whatever, it's for the movie. I, I like I said, I, I don't think the direction was very strong, but, like, yeah, the writing was pretty good. Uh, Ryan Reynolds was great. Uh, performances were solid. They were, they were fine. Actually, I love Taika Waititi. Yeah. I love that man as an actor and a director. Mm -hmm. Didn't love him in this I, role. I agree. Didn't love him in I that role. I adore Taika Waititi, but yeah. It, yeah, no, not one of my favorite. Yeah, didn't fit that of, of his, yeah. um, for sure. 
Yeah, I always yeah. love seeing Joe Keery get work. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I really like. Fair enough. Yeah, I really like guy. Joe Keery. Likeable guy. Um, I, I guess overall, I'd give Free Guy like a little bit under a seven, but right around. A yeah, seven. yeah, I was gonna say like a six point five, right around yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, right around there. Yeah, yeah no, no, solid above above average. If you're watching it with friends, mm-hmm. um, I'd even give it seven point five. Uh, yeah, I think. I, I watched it with a couple friends also, and we were we could all really laugh together. Yeah, exactly. There was enough laughs in that movie that you can warrant it. It's a decent comedy movie. I, uh, yeah, no. All right, free guy discussion. Free guy discussion over. over. Any other movies besides the one you listed? Because I think we can say, I think two of those movies especially, like we yeah. can have a whole conversation. Absolutely. Um, yeah, no, it's been a very limited viewing experience. Okay, okay fair enough. <laughs> I'll, I'll go over a couple. Um, I have to remember exactly, because earlier in the year, my mind is pretty much wiped of movies I've seen. <laughs> yeah, I was seriously. like, what did I watch in the first five months? Like, I will say there's a few movies that I haven't seen, but know a good amount about. So okay. I could bounce off of you. <laughs> let me let me bring up my ratings. But one I will say mm. that I really enjoyed uh, was Pig with okay. Nicolas Cage. All right. That was a very quaint little film. Not what I was expecting. Uh, it's, it's definitely much like kind of slower paced, like drama based movie than I was expecting. But... Did that come um, out in theaters, or was that just... A it str- did come up in theaters, okay. but I watched it online. Oh, my God. I'm just remembering <laughs> all the movies that came out today. I'm, I'm scrolling through. I already found a couple three out of tens. I was Ooh. like, I really didn't really love this movie. Um, anyways, I'm going to finish up on Pig. Mm. Great character study. Nicolas Cage gave a great performance. I love the direction, the writing, the filming. I think... What brings it down a little bit, and it's it is very intentional, but it is also like crucial to the story. Right. But is you know it is kind of slower paced a little bit some of the time. Not necessarily um, the worst thing by any it, means. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But what it builds to, I'm like, man, like, damn, like it was just something beautiful about it that I was like, okay, yeah, I don't know, it just really got me. Um, some of the stinkers this Ooh, year. Let's hear them. Fucking Venom Two. I was about Boo. to ask about Venom Two, dude. Okay, listen, better than the first one. I did not love the first one. I did not like the... Okay, actually, hold up. I'll say this. Mm-hmm. I kind of like the first one. Like, it's like a guilty pleasure sorry, for me. Sorry. But as a movie... You know what? Ooh. Yeah, no, if you're going you're gonna <laughs> to actually take... It's long. Like, the better thing about Venom 2 is it's short. Like, it's yeah, an hour and a half. Fair enough. I, I... Listen, the Venom movies, like, Tom Hardy, um, just talking to himself for however long, Yeah, I find, like, needlessly entertaining. It is. If I were to say... Okay, but was this a good Venom movie and a good Carnage movie? Yeah. Almost the best it could have been. I guess. Well, I maybe can, not. Maybe I, not. I, listen, can we get can we get an, for my two things? The first one especially, and I haven't seen the second one. But I know some okay. about it, but like divulge. the first one, um, like the parts where he's dealing with Venom yeah. are the parts where I'm like, ah, oh, fun. The fight scenes, I'm like, eh. Oh. It, Yo, in the first it, movie, yeah, it sucked, dude. It, it was it was so dark and confusing. So there was so dark. many blobs. It was just yeah, it's just two CGI blobs dude, in the I dark. Hundred percent agree. Yeah, it's the oh, weakest yeah. parts of the movie, which is unfortunate because listen, the performance strong, and so that I enjoy. Yeah. But like, you want to see Venom tear things up? Yeah. From a character's perspective, I will say yes. In the second movie, it is better. Okay. Um, especially uh, it's not really spoiling anything like this is every superhero movie but the final fight fight is, is better very good yeah. okay yeah and i was like that yeah yeah, yeah yeah that's good but i think where it lacks you know even my what my girlfriend was saying is she's like you know it could have been longer yeah and i was like i was like i was like for a second i was like i didn't want it to be longer but to be fair like yeah there's some <laughs> there's a little like i think actually if a third of the shots in the movie right. were like four seconds longer it might have been a slightly better movie. Oh, okay. Like it's hard to say because it's like I think if they fleshed out, like if they think I think if they went a little deeper into some stuff, that would have been interesting. Right. It would have been a better movie, but at the same time, I think the 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 best part of the movie is the pacing because it's just a breakneck. Let's just go on to the next shit. Let's deal yeah, with yeah. Tom Hardy's fucking a, a Chinese. Uh, convenience shop owner and like that <laughs> so whole side plot and that's better in this movie and you know his relationship oh well there's a scene whatever while we're on I do have two questions about Venom yes um, namely one do you think it could have benefited from an R rating yeah yeah I guess so yeah, yeah it could have it yeah. could have because I think I think one movie that we'll we'll get to in a sec mm. that, that did benefit from the R rating was Suicide Squad 
because yeah, that movie's fucking awesome and gruesome and gory and yes. like it's just great. It looks you're like oh shit. And I think with Venom, it, yeah, it you don't I, see really and it. Yeah. and the other issue being that like you kind of expect that from Venom, especially if you know anything about the source material, Carnage especially. Yeah, like if you know anything about the source material, you expect it yeah. to be there, and so it's a little like Suicide Squad. I didn't know early on. And I was like, is it going to be R-rated? Because that would be solid. But if it's not, I still think James Gunn could do something good with it. And then it was R-rated and I was happy. Yeah. But it was like, I didn't really know what to expect. Venom, they have to deal with expectations, I'd say, more so than than others. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, look yeah. at look at Logan. Look yes. at Deadpool. Those are amazing superhero R-rated movies, yeah, and it really works from that rating because it's so um, visceral. You know, yeah, it is, and it, but it's also so natural to the story and the characters. But with Venom, it's like you're like, hey man, yeah, I want to see him rip somebody's head off, and there's fucking blood spraying. <laughs> but yeah. like, oh, they want to get the the kid market in, you know? Right, and it's like I don't know if these are your most kid friendly characters, guys. <laughs> um, I think I think to wrap it up, like it yeah. wasn't offensive. You know, it wasn't like, oh, God, that was the worst movie. That was such a right. bad movie. Not by any means. It was fine. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd probably recommend that to, like, just the average moviegoer. I think Venom 1 and 2, yeah. Venom 2 especially, are great, like, party movies. Like, Fair. just throw them on in the background. Yeah, you can glance play, over and be like, oh, music, I remember that Play scene. music over them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you don't have to fucking... So annoying. My um, second question really fast was, okay. did they get rid of the terrible wig that they put Woody Harrelson in at the end of the first Venom. Oh, man. In that end credit scene of the first Venom, he was wearing an awful well, wig. Brother, just look at the poster, you know what I'm It saying? was... I didn't... I didn't like, it, did they replace it? Uh, Please? They probably made it better. Like, okay, I think it looks good. a little better, but, okay, like, good, here. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well... Call that an improvement. Yeah. You know, it it didn't look awful. Okay. It didn't, you know, because, like, you know, obviously when Woody Harrelson's bald, but you're just mm -hmm. like... Yeah, fine. Fine, he has hair in this <laughs> the, movie. That wig in the first end credits. Uh, anyways, it, it wasn't the worst part of the movie. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, and another... Uh, I actually did watch a decent amount of movies. Oh, wow, I didn't... I watched more movies than I thought. <laughs> you know, anyway, let me just go back to the beginning of the year. I'll rapid fire them off. Hold All on. right, let's hear these. Um, I watched Mortal Kombat. It was fine. <laughs> like, whatever. And that's the end of that, yeah. Um, it was kind of bad, but not really. Uh, oh, my God. I watched, like, kind of most of Army of the Dead, the fucking, like, Zack Snyder's zombie movie in yes. Vegas. Oh, oh, I hey, did. Man. I saw a lot of clips of that, actually. I fucking, I laughed. <laughs> I was like, I don't I, care. It seemed so generic. It was very generic. <laughs> um, none of the characters were likable. I wasn't... Like I didn't care about the plot. At yeah, all. well, like, yeah, that's here, not what look, you need in a zombie movie. Look at look at this right here. <laughs> this one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It just says in the the IMDb's glitching, so it says Bo Burnham what? Because I guess what? I rewatched it and yeah. re-rated it, but it's the poster of Godzilla, which is funny because if I you've see. seen Bo Burnham what, like he has a gag about that, so that's kind of <laughs> interesting. Um. A kind of movie, but speaking of Bo Burnham, Inside yes. is probably one of my favorite experiences I've dealt with this year. It was very huh. like, deep and emotional and brilliant and visually spectacular. Like yeah. the, I can't praise that enough. I, I Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agreed. Yeah. Um, Inside was just, um, it was a masterpiece. Yeah. It was brilliant. Yeah. It was all of everyone's feelings and fears and everything about this yeah. the whole pandemic very true condensed into however long what was it an hour, hour 20 and a half almost, hour and a half yeah, yeah almost and it was just like because you go into it and if you've seen any any other bo burnham concert you know bo burnham always has a message for yeah, sure yeah but he definitely like his other like what for example um that was one of his other shows right yeah and like what's that the, one what's the message in that <laughs> I don't remember which one it was. I've seen no, all of all them, but I don't remember which one uh, that one it, was. It goes what, make happy, and then inside. Right, yeah. And like, yeah, no, but he always uh, would lean to more comedy, I'd say. Mo oh, wow. Inside's 14 plus, and the, his other ones are mature. That's interesting. I didn't know that was 14 plus. He kind of talks about like suicide and, and some very heavy very topics. Very heavy, like, oh man. I guess I get it. Like, I guess I get it. Like, right. if you're 14, you've you've heard about this subject. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know, no, There's for a sure. little bit of swearing, but, you know, 
actually there's a lot of swearing in that. In that to, yeah, to be there clear. is. I will um, say most quoted Bo Burnham show is definitely inside. I, yeah, I, I, I yeah, and I, everyone I, listen, I know quote it so much. I listen to that album. I love that album. Me too. Jeffrey oh. Bezos. <laughs> love it. Oh my God. Um. So yeah, that. Um. Shout out! Shout out! Really quick. Uh, I'm gonna recommend a show that came out last year mm-hmm. and uh, a season came out this year is Close Enough. I've seen it. You have? Clo- uh, by the people who did... A um, uh, regular show. Regular show. Yes, yeah. I've seen it all. That's a really good show. It's a really good I show. I really love that show. It it hooked me. Like, not really immediately hooked me. Right. Uh, um, Trinity, my girlfriend, was watching it kind of into the first season. Like, right, almost right. done the first season. I was like... I like this. And I then like it, we this. watched the second season together and I was like, man, I really like this. And I, then I rewatched yeah. the first season. It's, it's great. It, it's a, it, it does, it's a good show that really, it always tricks me every time. I know what yeah. to expect. And then I'm always like, ah, a normal animated. Oh, wow. Where yeah. are we going? Yeah. And then you're like this. Oh, this is real. Like yeah. you're, you're like, not, like this is happening. Oh, in the this show. is like a dream sequence yeah, to them. Like, this is just, oh, this is their reality. Yeah, now? I know. It's great. Oh, it's the just devil. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the de- yeah. Oh, the devil. And you know, she's a ghost now or uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, I love, I, I love that show. Oh, like, it's great. I'd recommend that to everyone. I think. Stuff. Oh. Uh, I mean, spoiler for the first movie. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Anyways, um, we're just gonna bleep out that entire thing. No. <laughs> hey man, if you haven't watched Mal, no. yeah, what are you doing? Um, I watched Luca. I watched Luca, which was pretty quaint. Was I pretty liked fine. it. Yeah. I, you know what? When I go to a Pixar movie, I um expect perfection. No, yeah, um, I want I, everything to be exactly the way I thought, and then not the way I thought at yeah, the end of the movie. You know, I feel like it's been a while <clears throat> since Pixar released something that wasn't like, wow, that was amazing, but also wasn't like, ugh, that was rough. Oh, been a while? Oh, yeah. what was the last one that you're like, damn, that was so good? Uh, you know what? And it's it's a back and forth with me. I really liked Soul. Soul, eh? I really... Well, that was fucking end of last year. Uh, oh, was it? That was, yeah, that was, that was the end of... It was like... Dis, it was like mm. the end of 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I really liked... Yeah. I really liked... No, I but, did, I, my, I, did really no, like but I was saying it's been a while since... Um, Pixar has released anything that uh, wasn't either terrible or amazing. Okay. Usually uh, their movies are either really good or really bad. And Luca was fine. Yeah, Luca was, it was fine. Right there, and I, it was right. You know, it was, yeah. you know, it was fun, nice, it, casual it, It's viewing. not going to hit my top 15, maybe not, and not even 20, top 20 Pixar movies. Yeah, uh, actually, it, I, I went through a list. I don't think there are that many. Uh really? Yeah, I think there's like... Then, then I hate Luca, because I can name <laughs> 15 fucking... No. Um, How many Pixar movies are there? like 20-something. Like, like mainstream like big ones. Do we Do we count planes? 24. Yeah, 24. Do we count planes? I guess we're probably counting planes. <laughs> Kayla, I'm just going to go through it real quick. Real fast. Real recap for everybody listening. <laughs> Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Toy Story 2, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, Incredibles, Cars, Ratatouille, Wally, Up, Toy Story 3, Cars 2, Brave, Monsters University, Inside Out, The Good Dinosaur, Finding Dory, Cars 3, Coco, Incredibles 2, Toy Story 4, Onward, Soul, Luca. Yeah. Uh, so I guess it would be in my top 20, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it's... definitely, I don't, I don't think it would be in my top 15. What's, like, your, what's your least rated <laughs> Pixar What's my movie? least favorite Pixar, Pixar movie? movie? Uh, probably the fucking... Good dinosaur. Good dinosaur. Yeah, yes. Probably. Cars two. Uh, Cars two. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen yeah. Cars three, and I haven't seen Coco yet. I've been hearing amazing things about Coco, but I've please seen watch that. Coco. I will watch Coco. Oh my goodness. I will watch Coco. Hey, I promise. Not to go back a few years, but please yeah. watch Coco. Hey, I swear on my Ice Cube phone that I will watch Coco. <laughs> I, right oh now. I will say, uh, Coco. Uh, all all Pixar movies being considered. Pixar movies love to love to try and make you cry. They're evil. Like oh yeah, that. yeah. Um, Coco. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, certain Pixar movies are like this made me cry the first few times, but I'm I'm ready now. Coco every time. Every time. Every. How many time. times have you seen Coco? Like five, six. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, I'll get little, on that Coco because yeah, yeah. even Jeff he like hates musicals, but yeah. he's like Coco like just fucking slap. It, it does. Um. Okay, we're closing in. Black Widow. I haven't seen Black Widow yet. I heard that it was fine. <laughs> it is fine. Um, <laughs> you know, I I uh, I think it's like just about average. Right. But I think it's it's average in nature. It brings it down a little bit. Like mm. it's so weird to say, but like, well, we're at a point in Marvel movies where 
If you're not substantial, you're just kind of lost on people. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Like, like Shang-Chi was new and it was fresh and it did some things. And was it the best Marvel movie ever? No, but no. it was, it was good and yeah. I liked it. It brought up a new side of Marvel that we yes. hadn't seen before. The kind of magical fantasy aspect. Yeah. And like lots of homage to like classic yeah. uh, martial arts films, which I love. And like stories that have been around for like so, so long. Absolutely. And some cool cultural stuff as well that yeah. I, I really appreciated. Uh, and you know, it, it did something new and my understanding was that Black Widow didn't really. That's true. That's, that's where it's at. And my other thing is like, was there any spoiler alert, um, for Avengers Endgame? So we're going back a little bit. Who hasn't? Right. I mean, what are you doing? (laughs) Um, so she's dead. Uh, was there, uh, obviously a prequel. Was there, does this add anything to the story? Uh, no. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's... Uh, <laughs> you know, okay, I'll be honest, like... Like if it had come out before like, Endgame. Okay, okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing, which also is... Kind of sucks about Black Widow. Yeah. Is because they shove so much, like, personal uh, emotion and personal conflict within the story of Black Widow, within the character of Black Widow uh, herself. Right. Um, And then, like, you know, they try to ham it up uh, as much as they can in the movie. They're hamming it up, you know, the connection with her family and stuff and where she's from and what she's gone through and stuff like that. And then there's action sequence and who's the villain, blah, 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 whatever, pop up. Real, ah, that person. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, and, but at the end of it, you're just like, oh, yeah, but she's dead <laughs> so this impacts nothing yeah not really uh, it's just yeah. more of a standalone and, story. I mean, and and to be fair uh they could have done it a whole lot worse eh. uh, so like that's sometimes where... that's all you're aiming for although i will say i i know from some of my more uh comic oriented friends um that they did not do the villain taskmaster any justice so that's... I didn't really give a shit. Yeah. I didn't really give Supposed a shit. It's supposed to be a really cool villain from the comics, but okay. uh, no. Okay, I think there's there's two movies I want to save a discussion for. Right. Because I think they can wholeheartedly have their like own, own discussion. Own, their own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're on this section in the yeah, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, got video. it. But um, I'll just go through like three more really quickly. Candyman. Okay. Candyman was interesting. Mm-hmm. It was bold. It had a message. It was saying something. It was visually very good. Um... For some reason, like, it just didn't, like, wow me. Like, I think there's various aspects in that movie that's just like, wow, like, that's really cool. And I like what they're doing there. Vague synopsis? Because I, ha- I know okay, nothing so about basically, Candyman. Okay, so um, basically, Candyman is something like a fairy tale already in this movie. Okay. If you say his name five times in front of a mirror, he'll appear and he'll kill you. Oh, very Beetlejuicey. Okay. Very Beetlejuice, uh, just plus two. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and with a mirror for some reason. <laughs> But um, more Bloody Mary. Yeah. So basically, it follows this uh, artist okay. is the main character, and he's making pieces reflecting um, uh, a racism in America and kind of just brutality, police brutality against black people, and uh, very, very keen in that theme, right? With most of his work, and um, the, throughout the movie, there's a lot of talk about how like. And this is actually a main message in the movie being brought up is that old neighborhoods that had a lot of black people are being like bought back and like, you know, uh, built up as like luxurious neighborhoods. But most of those black people, they just can't live there. So it's just like they're repurposing that area and then just building up actual like, you know, so condos and stuff and, and, and kind of making it a neighborhood. Okay. And it's just like, well, honestly, if we just learn to embrace kind of differences and, you know, if if we kind of evened even the playing ground just a little bit, it would be, you know, a better place and stuff. And that's where a lot of his personal artistic themes come in, which that itself. And I thought that was pretty well done. And it was actually interesting that that context and how it bled into his art. Um, and then you think like, wow, that doesn't sound like a horror movie. You know what I mean? That sounds like a kind of dramatic yeah. like kind of interpretation. Also, there's a murderer <laughs> who appears if you say his name five times, and uh, oh. I won't I won't spoil anything. But you know the the main the main character gets caught up in the in the scheme of Candyman and, uh, and stuff see. like that, yeah. you know, and and how that affects people around. Okay, him. good, real light, casual viewing. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah, very <laughs> uh, you know, it's just like you're like, oh, this is interesting. Yes, uh, you know, segregation and oh shit, dude, that wow, he got killed so cool. 
<laughs> yes, you know, like that is true. The artistic it ways like a, of it's just like a really odd juxtaposition. Oh but, yeah, <laughs> but it, I don't know. It, you know, it didn't wow me or anything, but like it, that in itself was very interesting. I think okay. they did it pretty well. Uh, it's not for everyone though. Okay. Um, I saw the Green Knight. I was pretty hyped for the Green Knight. Ah, yes, I heard a lot that about kind this. Of, uh, I think that kind of went under a lot of people's radar. Yeah, a little bit. But uh, I'll, I'll say the Green Knight. Mm, the trailer is better than the movie. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. The trailer is better of, than the movie. One of those. Yeah, because like the visual kind of like you're like, oh wow, this is what it's gonna go for. It just didn't really like nail it in terms of like the writing. The writing wasn't that great. The characters weren't likable. Like you just, it's just nothing like whimsical about it. Like you, it wasn't really going for whimsical, but to keep you invested in the story, there was nothing you're like, man, I really care about this character. It's just like, ah. And then the plot was like, ah, you know, what it built to it was like, okay, you know, you know what I mean? It was kind of one of those movies. Like you're like, wow, this is visually pretty cool. The direction was okay, but you're just like, ah. So, like, it's an okay movie. I would recommend it just to see your own personal experiences off of it. Um, one movie before the other two big ones right? Yes, I want to go into is Halloween Kills I also saw. Yes, okay. Now, I will preface this by saying uh, I watched the original Halloween mm -hmm. a while ago. Like, you know, I rewatched it, like, uh, two years ago, whatever. I really like that film. It's a very well-made film, very suspenseful. The only issues I have with it being technical, very technically very dated. Well. You know what I mean? The audio equipment and just, it's just dated. But, but to be fair, for, for coming out in the early 70s, it's a good, it's a good film. Uh, and then the 2018 one came out. It was, it was like kind of a, not a reboot, but a sequel to just the first movie. Yeah, they cut out a bunch in the middle. Yeah, there. yeah, it was crazy. Like the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever. What that the, didn't matter. The 2018 one, was it just called... <clears throat> You know, Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. yeah. So there's three movies confusing. in that franchise called Halloween because it was the Halloween and then a bunch of sequels and then they rebooted it Halloween, Halloween 2. And then they're like, now nah, we're done with that. And then Halloween is the sequel to just Halloween. Very confusing. They have a diagram on Wikipedia just being like, this not, is how it links up and this is what goes to this. When you need that, that's not a great <laughs> first step. It, it, it I love the diagram uh, di diagram because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it on screen. Halloween 3 is just on its own. <laughs> okay, and then like it goes Halloween one, two, four, five, and then it goes. Oh yeah, there's some sequels, but they're only off of the Halloween two. Like Halloween four and five didn't matter to uh, the plot, and then it goes. There's two more movies there, and then they go like, ah eh, no, no, we're gonna reboot it. So then there's another fucking little section, Halloween one and two, from a decade ago, and then. The new Halloween movie, which just goes off of the first movie, oh, and then goodness. and then two sequels to that. So we're actually getting a third movie in this new trilogy. They have their own cinematic universe going. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, Basically, okay, okay, I'll preface this by saying mm. I watched Halloween from 2018, and right. I liked that movie. It was it was pretty well directed. It was good. It was focused. It did everything it needed to do. Okay. It was a good movie. Okay, it was it was just. I would say a little bit above average in terms of a horror movie. I liked it. It was okay. good. Halloween Kills sucked, dude. It <laughs> fucking sucked. It was so annoying. It was just so unfocused. Why are all these characters in this movie? Why are we at a hospital? Didn't they get like a mob together? Oh, it was so annoying, dude. Okay, let me tell you. And I don't, I, I don't give a shit. I'm not even going to put a spoiler warning. I'm just going to go into it. This is my little fucking <laughs> goddamn two-minute riff on Halloween Kills. Ooh, it was so annoying. Okay, so basically there's a fucking side plot. And let me tell you, and I'm not exaggerating, this is goddamn 35 fucking minutes of the movie, at mm. least, at least, you yeah. know? Is that at the beginning of the movie, Michael Myers escapes with some uh, mental patients and right. they go loose and they catch most of them, except for two, Michael Myers and another dude. Okay? Oh, I heard about this. Okay, so uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, uh, basically at the end of the movie, blah, 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 shit happens. Uh, Lori, I think her name is. I believe so. Uh, that's played by Jamie Lee Curtis. She's wounded, so she goes to the hospital. And at the hospital, they're like, they're like she's dead. Uh, Michael Myers is dead. It's all good. It's all over now. And then fucking somebody else comes and is like, hey, listen, I didn't want to tell you this, but he's still alive. We didn't <laughs> kill him. We didn't kill him. He's still alive and he's fucking tearing shit up. Halloween kills. By the way, a little side note before I get to the risk. There's a lot of killing in this movie. Oh, yeah. And that's very uh, good. It was good kills. Good kills. Uh, I, think, I think if you were to make a compilation of just the kills in this movie, it would have been better. 
than the entire movie. <laughs> like, just just get the kills. <laughs> just get an eight minute second, like a uh, eight minute uh, segment of, of just, just the kills. Just that. That's a great movie, right? Fair there. enough. Um, okay, so they're at the hospital and they're like a mental patient, and there's this guy who like survived the original attack when he was a kid. Yeah. And he's like, my babysitter died and my sister died, but I'm alive. Um, and he kind of takes charge. He's like, we're going to kill Michael Myers. Right. This ends tonight. This is going to be over. And then one of the other mental patients is, for some reason, in the hospital. I don't know why. Maybe yes. that's probably. And he's running all over the place. And they're like, that's Michael Myers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're chasing him down. Why is this in the movie, dude? I don't fucking care. It's not even him. If this if this was like eight minutes of the movie, sure, whatever. Ah, a little side direction. It's like the entire last third of the movie and almost. He looks oh, it's nothing oh, he's a like short, my pudgy dude. He looks nothing like Michael oh, Myers. It's, like how? It's did the you... worst. And it's the worst. And it's so annoying. I'm just like I I don't care about this. I hate this. And Jamie Lee Curtis is screaming. It's not him. It's not Michael! And is the, no, then nobody cares. They're chasing him. There's like fucking 25 people or 30 people just chasing this random And they dude. catch him, right? They're like, this oh isn't Michael Myers. Oh my god, I hate it. Don't they all oh surround him at some point? Yeah, With okay, like so, weapons and bats? Yeah, they surround and... him with pitchforks and fucking bats. No, they, not with the pitchforks. I'm just kidding. Yeah. And then he, yeah, like, he goes to a window and he jumps out from like fucking, you know, 10 stories and kills himself. Cool. And then they're like, Oh, I don't think that's Michael Myers. I don't think that's him. <laughs> and they're like, fuck's sake. Lori's just like, God damn it. I hate it, dude. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. It was so bad. Brilliant comedy. Yeah, it was, uh, fuck. Anyways, that's my little scheme on those movies. That was a quick little recap of the movies I've seen. Some of yes. those you've seen. Uh, what I would recommend is Pig out of those and Inside by Bo Burnham. Absolutely. Now let's get into the two that are kind of the standouts for me. Okay. Which we'll start with one because it came out before. The Suicide Squad. Yes. Okay. What are your general thoughts on the Suicide General thoughts on the Suicide Squad. Um, I love it. Yes. And um, can you imagine if they'd given James Gunn an R rating for Guardians of the Galaxy? Cool. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, I loved Suicide Squad. It was bold. It was fun. And I think that's what was missing from the first one was fun. fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it was really fun. It was a really great time. I also love it. I think it's one of the best movies of the year. I think it's definitely probably the best DC movie to come out ever since Dark Knight. Yes. I oh, say since Dark Knight. I was going to say in, yeah, in the yeah, current oh, yeah, in the, DC yeah. Cinematic since Universe. Since Man of Steel, if we were mm -hmm. to go off of. Uh, yeah, it's between that and Shazam for me. Yeah, and I like Shazam. Again, like Shazam. Yeah. movies where they're willing to have fun, fun dude. That's wow, what DC is like. Wow, was what DC missing? It's crazy that I and go you brought, to movies. You to brought over myself. a Marvel director who created one of the funnest Marvel movies. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, hmm. That worked. Hmm. Yeah, that worked. That's what? crazy. Because I think Suicide Squad, the uh, Suicide Squad, not the Suicide Squad. Right. Is one of the worst movies to come out <sighs> in the decade. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say it. Hey, controversial take, but uh, I, I, like man, and I just want to clarify. When I say I want to go to the movie and have fun, The Dark Knight is a very serious movie. Yeah, it's gritty as hell. It has some good, but great, it's fun still moments. fun. Yeah, I think that's an important distinction. I think you know what? I think the one moment that really sets it off for me in The Dark Knight is one of the first like fun moments. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's the difference between? Between you and me, what, between what I'm doing and what you're doing, what's the difference? Yeah. I'm not wearing hockey pants. <laughs> like that? Yeah, that's fucking fun. That's, that's fun good as luck, luck, right? And then it kind of sets a toe, but um, with Suicide Squad, man, I let's try to keep away from spoilers, but let's yeah, just generally go sure, into sure. um, what we loved about it. I think uh, uh, the cast the was cast was amazing. brilliant. I think, I think, you know what? Low key, it's hard to go into shit about this movie without yes. fucking spoiling it. Agreed. There's a lot of I'll, big shit that to happens. Say, to say it like this, there are definitely uh, some actors and characters who I would have loved to see more of yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Um. However, the way that it played out, yeah. I was like, yeah, the main cast, how it kind of, you know, they kind of came forward. Yeah. Uh, it was great. It was great. Uh, yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, really good team dynamic between. The the main crew of the yeah, movie, the suicide I'd say. Yeah. The Suicide Squad. Really good uh, interaction. Dynamics, between them. Yeah. Like, none of those characters 
I mean, James Gunn. He's great at it. He, he, he can take a character like Polka Dot Man, who's almost a joke in the comic books, yeah. and make me be like, <clears throat> "Oh, I really care about yeah, Polka aw. Dot Man. Yeah, I know. It's like, um, oh. Yeah, no. It's it's very cool. It's very interesting. What, what most people would play off as a one-off joke, James yeah. Gunn integrates it into the story like, in a very well, in yeah. a very like emotional, Absolutely. impactful, very purposeful way. That affects the story and affects the characters most importantly. Um, Sylvester <clears throat> Stallone as King Shark. Yep. Brilliant. Yeah, great. I never would have... Reading a book upside down, Just <laughs> that's his introduction to the character. Just like, okay. It's like, yeah. Yeah, that was played very yeah, well. Um, uh, I think John, maybe John Cena's best performance I think I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think he had I, a lot to do in I that mean, show. I mean, the movie. They're giving him his own TV yeah, show. That's what I was, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, I guess he did good enough. It was just Elba, way. always. You know what? It was so... Okay, listen. Um, oh, my God. What's her name? Oh, help me. Who's Amanda Waller? Mar- oh, uh, Viola Davis. Viola Davis. So Viola Davis, Idris Elba, I consider to be the upper echelon of amazing actors. Yeah. Had they ever been in anything together before oh. this? None that I can think of. Nor I. And I'm thinking, you know that moment, uh, very minor spoiler, there's a moment where he threatens her life. I think it's for, in the trailer. Yeah, it's in the trailer. Yeah. She tries to blackmail his him by threatening his daughter, and he pulls a pen. He's very deadly. He can kill me with a pen. And threatens Covering her. Covering it half an like, inch from her right. neck. It right. is so <clears throat> tense and so brilliant. And I'm like, this is a comic book movie. Yeah. And you got these two doing that? Yeah. Holy hell. And that's another thing I love about this movie is every, pretty much everyone in the movie who's yeah. the main cast, they have a great moment with one another. Yes. Is if it's not a group dynamic, which, to be fair, the group dialogue between them going, bouncing off each other, probably the best part of the movie, but each of them has at least an, an, an intimate moment. Like even uh, uh, Joel... Kinnaman. Jo- Joel Kinnaman and Idris Elba, like there's yeah. a certain like little bond they they make yeah, over that absolutely. movie. And you wouldn't expect it, and in any other director's hands, it would be like ah, we don't have time for this. But yeah, he's but like, like that, you know what, a little it's, bit of a mutual important. respect. Yeah, and um, a comedy, or not comedy, but a a a performance from Idris Elba with a lot more comical moments a than lot, I'm used to. A lot more um, vulnerability. Yeah, yeah, and I <clears throat> loved it. Yeah. Well, like the, in the first moments when he interacts with his daughter and I'm like oh is this gonna be sad and it's fucking hilarious yeah. Yeah. it's one of my and, fuck you oh, yeah, it's no great. fuck you yeah, yeah I know like literally <laughs> and I'm like and then playing off John Cena so well it's true um, that that, that yeah. very unexpected but brilliant it's true it's I true. It was, loved it was special. It was I special. loved that Idris Elba performance I really did yeah yeah, I think I think um, it really surprised me. I think um, Margot Robbie, in certain ways, had uh, more time to shine. Yes, I, I think I think for the most part, like I think for the most part, she like she showed up, she did her job, and was like, yes. I think I think maybe there wasn't anything really surprising because yeah, she already had two. She's movies a good worth of stuff. Harley Quinn. We know what to expect. Yeah, I think out of most actresses in Hollywood, like she's she's a great pick. She's yeah, a great she is. Pick. She proved herself. Um. So so yeah, we both love the movie. We both recommend it. But now it's going to the spoiler territory. Okay, first. spoiler yeah, time. A little bit spoiler. Okay. Um. Everyone at the beginning fucking dies. dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's a massacre, dude. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> Yo, one of the fucking best misdirects I've seen almost in any movie uh, ever. Yeah. Was fucking Michael Rooker. They introduced him. Yeah. The most badass scene. The most fucking. He, he has the opening scene, and then like it's just like <laughs> everyone's getting killed. Oh my god. Fucking Pete Davis is dead. Like whatever. The the guy with the fucking bow is like whatever. And <laughs> Nathan Fillion with the arms. They just his arms get shot. Oh my god. And then god. like. Oh my word! Violet like, "You get back there right fucking now! What are you doing?" And then he just his heads explode. Uh, oh my god, dude! That just, was amazing. Um, I was almost, you know what? And uh, the, and to be so, it's it's brilliant in its own right because I didn't care about a lot. So the two things: one, I had no reason to care about a lot of those characters, but they did two things very well. They the advertising where they showed off everybody and i'm like ooh characters but then also um the actors they picked to portray them nathan fillion i love nathan fillion of course. and i was just like oh i love 
love Nathan Fillion. I lo- I want to care about him. I'm like Nathan Fillion. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. But not just that. Also, the fact that um to sprinkle in. I'll specifically specify Captain Boomerang was a surprise. Yeah. Because he was part of the original cast. One of the probably only positive performances from the original Suicide Squad movie. It's true. He was very good. He was, he was quite good, especially to portray that character. So when I saw him, I was like, oh, I was actually quite yeah. devastated. You know what's actually crazy is like, yeah, I, I can't explain it. Because like, I don't really give a shit about that actor. What's his name? I'll give you his initials. J.C. Is that enough? Jai Courtney. That is correct. Jai Courtney hasn't had the best track record. I, I, he did impress me in Suicide Squad. Yep. He used up his moments. I can't tell you what it was. I think it was maybe that, like, Harley Quinn was so, like, boomer. Like, like she was actually like, oh, distraught. God. And then he looks up and he's like, and then he dies. Yeah. Like, the helicopter, like, rolls over him. I was like, Oh my god. I'm sad. I was like, wow. He just smiled and I felt that. Yeah. Like it really hit me in a way that I was like, damn. That was just great. It was just uh, great. It, 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 James Gunn has this great way of like introducing, setting up a joke and and executing that joke in the perfect way while also making you care and while also giving develop to the character development to the characters and bouncing off having great dialogue, great moments. He's just great with that. I think, yeah, no. Um, I will say, I know some people who don't particularly care about comics, don't particularly care about, like, superhero movies, mm. and, um, but someone they love is uh, Pete Davidson, and they're like, I want, I want to see this superhero movie. Pete Davidson's in it. I was like, yeah, sure, sure. And I know yeah. they were kind of like, excuse me. <laughs> you... You made me excited. I was so and excited. Get away from me. And Three then... out of ten. Like, like, Fuck that movie. <laughs> Terrible movie. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. It was just the expectations. Hey, man. Like, I I kind of wanted to see Pete Davidson a little more, but yeah, I don't mind sure. at the I, same listen. time. Like, hey, it served the the overall film experience. You yes. know, I think I think the very brief moments he had, he, he shined. He did his thing, and then you know he's gone. Whatever. And, and well, we'll fast forward a bit. Um, the end of the movie. Um. Something I loved, which you don't... I'm trying to think of all superhero movies, which takes me a minute. Um, but uh, Every single one? Yeah, every single one. Okay. Um, oh, you got it, though. Yeah, no, I got them all now. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, nailed down. Yeah. <laughs> um, the villain. Yeah. Villains in superhero movies... I mean, Amanda Waller kind of plays an antagonistic role, but she's not that's really true. the big bad. She, uh, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, she she is an antagonist, especially yeah. towards the end of the movie. Yes, but um, Starro. Yeah, there are some ridiculous villains in comic books. Some ludicrous villains, like a giant sentient starfish with a big eye from outer space that's pink and blue. And I, we're at a point in in superhero movies where I don't expect to see that. They're you gonna expect go, to see a clone of the main fucking. Uh, yeah, character. yeah. Well, exactly. Or you, <clears throat> Ultron is a big evil robot. You know. It's, yeah. Uh, you know. See, in the climate of superhero movies today, where you get Venom versus another Venom, and then yes. the second Venom, where it's a red Venom. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> hey man, Suicide Squad against the like literally a giant font, the Suicide Squad versus Starro. It's like, yes. man, hell let's, yes. Yeah, I know. Uh, like you, freaky. I, I can't think of another superhero movie where you would get those villains, and I love that. Um, Peter Capaldi as the Thinker. Yeah. Uh, like uh, a minor villain in the movie, but another one that I'm like, um, I didn't think we'd get. The think not. I didn't think we'd ever get a thinker. I wasn't sure. He's a little bit more of a obscure character, but also that I have no idea. I'm that's like, fine. Yeah. But <laughs> also that they uh, like. I liked the costume design. They really went yeah. for it. They yeah, really they did. did. And you know what I like actually is that um, they have some flashback sequences with Peter Capaldi, and he has like five light bulbs like, on his less head. Less things, and then like it's current day, and he has like fucking thirteen. Yeah, like, that's great little detail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That ah, uh, time has passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, like, you know, um, um, uh, yeah, I think the transitions sorry, are pretty cool, too. Can we also talk about the fact that that Starro, the giant starfish, is just... Oh, yeah, that one. Uh, ...is just 
it's like Godzilla. It's he has no personality. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. They still managed to humanize him they at the did. end. A humanized a giant fucking starfish, which is something they couldn't even do for like enchantress. I mean, I guess they tried, but they it's tried. like not really great. But like, yeah, there's some there's some like, fucking superhero movies, but it's just like I yeah, I felt more for a giant starfish than I did for enchantress. I was like, I feel bad for Starro now. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> I was happy just drifting in space. Floating in space. Man. You're like, fuck, dude. Oh, my God. Anyways. Eat his eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> Rats. Oh, my God. And, hey, hey, Taika Waititi, better in this movie than Free Guy. <laughs> Small role, it. but great. It just worked. It, it did work. I mean, that's sort of eccentric. That's what he specializes as. My, I think, well, I think we, we can end this with my favorite scene in the movie. And yeah. You can say yours. My favorite scene in the movie. Mm -hmm. Is when they're um they're they're sneaking up on this in base the camp. in the, in the yeah, forest yeah. and they're like they're like taking out people and bah it's just like ah I was just like ah I'm cooler than you and shit like that yeah. it's just like um <laughs> it's just like bah ha you didn't you, it wasn't a fatal shot Boom. exploding bullets ah uh, nobody just, likes a show off yeah, it's just like except when it's fucking dope and he's like damn it fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that. And then, and then it to be let up. It's just like, this was the rebel camp. These where is our, everyone? Those were our friends. Yeah, no, it's like, no, it's not even that. It's like, where is everyone? This Ooh. is, I don't hear anything. And they're just like, yeah, we didn't, we didn't see any, we didn't see anyone. Didn't see anyone. That was in. great. I was literally laughing so hard. Like that was great. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, my favorite scene in the movie. Uh. I gotta be honest, in the climax of the movie, it's, my favorite scene is probably one of the ones, no, you know what I say, um, my favorite scenes are probably revolve around Polka Dot Man. Yeah. I love Polka Dot Man so yeah. much. They, there's this one moment where they're building up emotions, and they're yeah. all talking about their tragic backstories, yeah. and yeah. they're talking to each other, and he talks about how cruel his mom was to him, and they're like, where is she now? And I'm like, this is a very sad moment to have like an abusive mother. Like, She's everywhere. And it cuts to him literally seeing all of them as his mother. Mm -hmm. And it's this purely kind of like dramatic kind of sad moment that you're immediately like, what? Yeah, you're like, yeah, no, it's absurd. It's so it's ridiculous. But at the same time, you're like, oh, oh, that's <laughs> yeah. sad. But I think that's that's the hey, that's the James Gunn trademark. Exactly. Being like, what? What? Uh -huh. Oh yeah. yeah. I guess. And then the payoff of that. Yeah. Um. With being spoilers. Like... Uh, when they're attacking Starro. Yeah. And Idris Elba's learning to lead the team, and he's like, "It's your mom." And he looks mm. up, and he's just like, "It was just." <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. That, no. Yeah. It was, it was utilizing like a, it was a callback joke, but it was, it was also advancing. It was. The plot it was. Too. It was a callback joke to like a really what felt like a one-off joke. It did, and then <clears throat> still had plot relevance. Brilliant. It was, and that's yeah. Can't can't compliment that type of filmmaking enough. Yeah. The other major movie uh, would be Dune. It would be Dune. Dune. You know what? The thing about Dune is like, um, and I think we'll keep this completely spoiler free. Fair, yeah. Because I, I don't think there's anything necessarily that we I don't know if any of the most dramatic stuff has even happened yet. We're going to have to wait for part two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the point. Because like, let's be honest, like, I think those who know a little bit about the movie know it's, yep. it's, it's the first movie. Yes. And I don't know if there's going to be two or three. I would guess... Three. Mm -hmm. I would guess that he's gonna make a trilogy. Okay. Now there's a lot of source material. Apparently, there's like fucking seven six, books. Six, six or, or seven, seven books. And, uh, to be fair, the six or seven books. Crazy. As far as I understand, I have a friend who is an expert on the subject and has read them all. Yeah. And after we watched the movie together, I got to sit there for forty five minutes as he talked at me. <laughs> like, yeah, actually, what they didn't get right is <laughs> like um. <laughs> Apparently, they were actually very like fairly faithful, faithful to the source. Okay. Anyways. As I've been told. Okay. Uh, but I, mean, no. I don't know shit. You just you could be lying to my face. Have <laughs> but, you even read Dune? I don't know. I have. Yeah, no, I have no context. They start my making friend's up just shit. a massive liar. Yeah, and he's I compulsive. Have, I'm yeah. just going to start telling you a bunch of nonsense. Anyway, yeah. from what I understand, the novels span like millennia. Oh. Thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Like five, six thousand years between the first and last book. And it's... Whoa. Yeah, no, it's kind of crazy. It's <laughs> <laughs> like that's exhausting. Just hearing um, no, yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. yeah, no, and um, so this is only the first book, and it's like 
it's like if, if I remember, it's like the first book to the second book. There's like twelve years difference, maybe second between to the thir- first and second. Yeah, and then second to third book. So like Dune another... two coming out in fucking twenty thirty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like two to the second to the third book. There's like I mean like. 30 years difference, book three to four, 3,000 oh, years God, in damn. the future. Oh, God damn, Jesus Christ. Or something, and it's, it's a like... a little aggressive. Okay. So... Like, I didn't even... I don't want to say goodbye to these characters. Yeah. Are we ever going to see them again? So, Alto Magmorbian is now... It's like, wait, what? Uh, who the who? fuck? Excuse yo, me? Yo, imagine... Yo, imagine being a Dune fan, like, when <laughs> it was coming out, and they're just like... Fuck is this bullshit? <laughs> where's Paul? Three, yeah, where's Paul? Okay, okay I want to touch on um, the names. Yeah, yeah, Paul. I love Paul, Jessica, Jessica. When like, cause they 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 have titles. It's like no, no Howard. You know? <laughs> it's like what? It's just uh, um, it was. Howard, yeah. I got used to it, but it was just very. Like, it was biblical. slightly jarring. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I see. Yeah, um, and then they're they're called they they have like titles for their like prophets, which sounds very. Can you remember what their house name was? Wait, oh, it's it's coming back to me. Um, Atreus. Atreus. No, it's not Atreus. Atreus. Is it not Atreus? It's not a Atreus. 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 Why does that sound Atreides? Atreides. Yes, the one you got. I got. I mix it up with never ending story. Atreus. Yeah, House of Trades. Yes, uh, um, lots of words there that I won't remember. Yeah, pretty. Uh, you know, it comes across very like royal. Like there's a ruler of the galaxy, and they rule. I guess like a planet. And yeah, then they're so like, actually, you can go to this planet. So brief. Yeah. Again, I'm I'm giving you secondhand information here, but yeah. um, there's an emperor who's kind of in charge of everything yes. across the galaxy. Everyone listens to him, and then there are different houses. Uh, think Game of Thrones. They each have their own land, their own okay. power. Uh, in this except, case, planets. Ex- in this case, planets. This is... House Atreides getting a little too popular, a little too powerful, uh, and the Emperor is like, "Yeah, I don't like that." Um, he hey, act- oh, I'm gonna bestow upon you this honor, this lovely of looking over this planet, planet. which has uh, a- an item, a resource yes. that is the most is, sought is the most resource. sought after. So, like, this is a great honor. And then they, you know, it's just it's, it's a setup. It's not as yeah, it's as not as honorary as they yeah, think yeah. it is, and so they that's, have to deal with that. That's the um, setup basic, of the movie. Basic premise, the setup yes. of the movie, yeah. That's the basic premise, is what I understand. Um, yeah, and I will say, um, again, no spoilers, but I got to the ending and I knew where it was ending. I knew I was like, okay, we're wrapping up here, but at yeah. the same time, I was like. That's it? Not one more? A little bit? No, nothing else? Yeah. I mean, I, I expected it to. Um, I think that's, that's, that is that's is the biggest con I could have of the movie. Because, I mean, to be fair, and I don't really want to compare it so much to this, because th- these bodies of work are masterpieces. Yes. If you were to say to, to Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. I think Dune is actually more of an empty movie than Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah, in I comparison. can see that. In comparison, which makes you feel a little, a little bit... Uh, underwhelmed right occasionally but it is a gorgeous movie amazing Beautiful. shots amazing sets amazing props sets uh, performances uh, uh, and costumes beautiful oh, amazing yeah the abs- performances as well i uh i i mean timothy chalamet i was actually really like oh. uh, you know what he did impress me this time yeah. i think he has uh we all know him to have leading star capability um, but um, yeah, he, he did impress yeah, me. Yeah, and I so no from a visual perspective, mind blowing. Um, I will say I don't also I also don't want to judge it too harshly because yeah, I'm like I'm I'm left feeling wanting more. But at one point, that's not a bad thing because yeah. more is oh, coming. That very much isn't a bad thing. I think um, in the sense of if you were to compare it to a lot of other movies like maybe Venom, you're just like Venom One, you're just like this is too much. Like this is yeah. For fuck's oh, sake, you really can we trim it yet? down? Can we trim it down? With Dune, yeah, it was genuinely I was like, like I would like when more. Dune co- when Dune Two comes out, that's gonna be a great like little pairing viewing and Absolutely. and you might even. Be wanting to see where's Dune three, and when Dune three comes out, if, and uh, if it does, like I am, I I I do believe it's gonna. And be a if they're all consistent, yeah, they're then consistent. it'll be more like you watch a full body of work. These are meant to be all like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It was those are that is a story that is told in three parts. And what's great about it is it's under the same vision. Exactly. So if all three Dunes are all Denis Villeneuve. 
I I'll feel and, really good about it. And yeah. and then if I can see it all, then I can judge it a little bit more fairly. I think be like, wow, I see now what they were you know going, going for, for back yeah, at the beginning of hinting, movie one you realize that there's more in the first movie that's than you think. that's and it's grown on me a little yeah bit. no it and I, if they do it right i mean lord of the rings proved that it can be done that's what setting up a trilogy ahead of time looks yeah. like disney yeah uh, disney star wars yeah <laughs> steve jobs no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it's just it's just like this Kanye rant. It's just like it's just like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Disney, <laughs> Google, and he just like names on bunch of like um, Kanye. You, you good? I Walt w- Disney. <laughs> I will say, if you're going to see Dune, yeah, exclusively because you're a huge fan of Zendaya. Maybe wait till the next one comes out. <laughs> yeah, it's probably. Um, um, probably going to want to catch this on a uh, 4K Blu-ray. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, Zendaya is in there. Oh yeah, she is uh, in there. A bit. Hey, listen, I could call. I could tell you that from like the the trailer, like before the movie started. I was, yeah, like, I was like, bro, uh, she's not gonna be. Zendaya is not in this movie. <laughs> um, and that's you know that's something. You know what's you know what's kind of funny though is just like <laughs> think about like Force Awakens. You know yeah, what I mean? And just yeah. think about like. Oh shit! Fucking Luke Skywalker is in this movie. I wonder what he's gonna do. Yeah, he's at the end. Oh, he's That's at it. the end. Okay, okay cool. Uh, Zendaya. Oh, Zendaya is in this movie while she's in it for a little bit. Yeah, right there. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but but to be fair, it is it is a great movie. It's it's a movie that's grown on me a lot. And shit, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. No, I think Dune Dune has the potential to be the next big sci-fi epic. It it definitely has that potential, and I really hope it fulfills that potential. I, I think, agree. I think. Um, you know, I think I think what's great about Lord of the Rings, for the most part, each movie can be somebody's favorite movie. Yeah. And if Dune 2 is better than Dune 1 and Dune 3 is better than Dune, Dune 2, 2, I can foresee somebody being like, yeah, but Dune 1, like, I don't know, like, I, I the- kind of fuck with it. And you just be like, well, I don't yeah, agree, I, but sure. I understand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can understand. Like, I can, I can see how that could be somebody's favorite movie in the trilogy. Yeah. And I haven't even seen the fucking trilogy so far. I hope it's better. Yeah, no, I for hope sure. It's more... I hope it continues to grow and expand. And I will say, like, obviously, a lot of time is dedicated to world building, and that they do Very brilliantly. Well. Yeah, like, just absolutely. I I was immersed in the world. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, and they their own tech, they have their own technology, their own yeah customs. Own, like, it's all very little, like kind of needle thing the, that flies around, the, yeah, and, like just ver- detects movement. Shit. Very brief, great. very briefly, um, minic- minuscule spoiler. Uh, like, the, but when I say their own customs, like you feel like it's a world. When the uh, one of the desert dwellers kind of shows up and just spits on the floor, and they're like, "What the?" <laughs> and they're like, "No, no, it's, no, no, it's no, what they do?" And they're like, um, "Thank you for donating your bodily fluids to us, because water is such a resource in the desert." Like that sort of thing. It's like, oh, I feel very misconception, but it's also at the same time, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's that's a, a good thing. Yeah. I understand why they would see yeah. that as a positive gesture. It, it reminds me of that episode in Rick and Morty where yeah. they um, Rick builds a universe inside his car to power <laughs> yeah, his yeah. car, and then he like has a civilization so that he can <laughs> they can power that shit. And then and Rick comes down. And he's just like, hey, hey. Oh, I told him this means peace in yeah, this world. Peace ah. among worlds. And then and then in the second world, it was just like, ha ha ha. ha. I told oh, him this means peace, peace amongst people. <laughs> you know, it was it was oh, great. It was a great little misconception there. And um, yeah, yeah, it was great. I, I did like Dune. Anyways, Dune is is good. It's good. It's we good. recommend it. You'll you'll I give leave it, wanting more, but that's a good thing. I give it. Uh, I don't. Know. I give it a thumb and a half. A thumb and a half out yeah. of two thumbs? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'll, I, I'll give it. You know what? It's I, very, you know, come to think of it, wow, what a, like, a very, like, you know, th- hey, this is, like, this is 50%, and then this is 75%. It's <laughs> yeah. like, damn, shit, I don't have much options. I, I would uh, give it a round. I'll give it a, I'll give it a thumb and three quarters. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're like... <I> <laughs> Yeah, it was, um, it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I I liked it. I guess I'm more of a out of ten kind of guy. Cause yeah, no, put, me too. Um, I you know I give Dune I give Dune like a seven point two six. Seven point two six. Yeah, I'd I'd be willing to give it an eight. Um, okay, based purely just an eight, like an eight point zero zero. Eight point zero zero. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, that, again, that's a sort of rating that might change. Yeah. Once I see the full thing, but yeah, eight. Um, like good acting, but like just world building story. Visual direction, oh, 
Anyways, yeah, yeah. It's true. Anyways, I have one more thing. Okay. I'm leaving this. It was here the whole time. Okay. Ooh, wow. Oh, the Travis Hill podcast. Yeah. <laughs>